So I've been a little sick, and that means I'm a little bit behind. So you know what that means. Here comes Rapid Fire Reviews. Now I know some of you wanted a full review of one of these movies, but I'm just too far behind on anything. So uh, lock and load. Here we go. Let's count them down. First up, Richard Jewell. Based on the true story, this film is about the security guard that found a bomb at the 1996 Atlanta Olympics. Jewell's life is soon turned inside out when he is accused of being the one that planted the bomb so that he could find it and be a hero. This Clint Eastwood directed story takes a look at how both the media and law enforcement may have, and by may I mean probably, caused the public to ruin one man's life. While I thought this was a decent movie, the lack of any real doubt on whether or not Jewel did it might have made for a more compelling film. Yes, I know that this is based on real life, but I think it might have driven home how the public felt about him at the time, making us, the public, feel like, you know, the public. Any real discoveries or evidence that Sam Rockwell's character finds to defend Jewel is already known to us, since we see the bombing event happen. I thought the performances were good, but some of the characters came off a bit cartoony. Olivia Wilde's character, who plays the late reporter Kathy Scruggs, comes off like a very Lois Lane reporter, but in all the wrong ways. The movie also implied that she would sleep with law enforcement to get scoops, which is probably one of the reasons why her former paper isn't really happy with this movie. Now the film itself will keep you interested until the end, but other than for some of the performances, there isn't really any other reason to check this one out in theaters. Check it out as a rental. Now speaking of the media, next up, Bombshell. This movie is about how former Fox News anchor Gretchen Carlson, played by Nicole Kidman, started the uprising against the female harassment by the now former head of Fox News, Roger Ailes. Now, I was really looking forward to this one, and for the most part, it did not disappoint. All the leads did a fantastic job. Kidman is almost unrecognizable and has an uncanny likeness to Carlson. Charlie Theron, who plays Megan Kelly, actually gets to play the controversial anchor in a sympathetic light. But don't worry, the movie makes a point to let you know that her big mouth will eventually get her into trouble. Margot Robbie, whose character is basically a combination of many women who are harassed, does a great job at bringing those issues and the emotions behind them to light. Okay, now John Lithgow is damn creepy as Roger Ailes. He is able to show you how money and success can make someone like him abuse his power. Before someone goes into his office or after that door locks, you're not sure what's going to happen, but you know it's not going to be good. The film itself is at its strongest when the characters are narrating the story House of Cards style. I kind of wish that there was more of it and maybe even from some of the other characters, but not having that does not ruin the movie. Now, I'd like other movies that are trying way too hard to empower characters by putting down others to pay attention. This movie is how you do it. There are women that come off as very strong, even though some of them are flawed. Megan Kelly, anyone? On the flip side, there are some pretty terrible women that are adding to the problem as well. There are guys that come off as creeps and a-holes. Ailes, Hannity, O'Reilly, need I go on? But there are also ones that are good people trying to help and are supporting our main characters and their cause. I guess what I'm saying is that you can have strong, compelling characters without having to tear down others to the point of nothing. It's called good character development, in the case of this movie, fair and balanced. Now, as a whole, this movie isn't too fair and balanced. I know a lot of people that will not like this one, but I thought it was pretty good. All right, lastly, let's get this over with. Let's talk about Cats. This movie is about, you know what? No, 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 I'm, I'm not letting this one slide. No, I, I can't not talk about it. I was going to do rapid fire views. I was going to get caught up. I need to get caught up. I've been sick, been coughing up hairballs, but no, no, I'm, I'm not letting this one go. And I'm telling you right now. I, I try not to get angry about movies anymore. I really do. And I really try to find the good and bad and all. But man, there is sometimes that you can't find any good in a movie. And I'll try. I will. I'll try my best. I will. I'll find, I'll find one thing. I will. I'll, I promise I'll try so hard. 
to find one thing, but look, if you enjoy the play and you like this movie because of it, I'm happy for you. If you think this is a weird, you know, just it's so weird. It's good type of movie. Good for you. I'm happy for you. If you have a hunch that if you got stoned out of your flipping mind and this movie would be fantastic. Great. If you've gotten stoned and come out of this thinking it's the most amazing thing in the world. Great. But for me, I, Oh, Oh. And and if you, if you enjoy this weird cat human hybrid thing for certain reasons, certain reasons, good for you too. Forgive the cut. I had a bit of a hairball I had to get rid of. Um, <laughs> this movie, I I tried, man. <laughs> I really tried. I'm like, look, I, I normally don't let trailers ruin an experience for me. I was hoping I'd go in this and it'd be weird enough I'd like it. Or the music would be good enough and I'd like it. Or... There'd be a performance in it that I'd be like, it's fantastic and and you can't be denied. But this movie, I've never wanted to walk out of a movie so much in my life. And again, if you love it, that's great. I'm happy for you. But it took me probably the opening song for me to realize that I am going to hate every minute of this. Here's how the, what the movie is about, at least the gist that I've got. Every year, cats get together and they have to sing a song for Judy Dench. And whoever has the best song gets a new life. Um, and from my understanding, it's like cat heaven, um, which basically means they're dying. Um, that's what somebody that's seen the play told me. It's like they're going to their death. And I don't, I don't know, death seemed awful happy. And by the way, spoilers, there will be spoilers. Um, death seems awful happy when you're flying away in a hot air balloon. Um, so everyone is trying to vie for this spot. Um, and then, and especially the villain. Um, <laughs> the villain. Okay, this, I'm sorry, this is one of the dumbest names in history. Mick Cavity. Mick Cavity. I'm sorry, McCavity. I'll say it right, McCavity. Um, played by Idris Elba, who <laughs> he's the Russell Crowe from Les Mes of this movie. <laughs> he's, I love Idris Elba, but my God, man! And you think he looks weird with the hat and the coat? Wait till he takes it off. Um, so here's how basically the the movie goes. Um, we meet our main character, Victoria. And and really, I'm not I wasn't gonna remember these names. You think I would, and I'll explain why in a minute, but I you, I have to look at a list. Victoria, even though the, and then they're like cats have three different names. Uh Victoria Um gets thrown out from somewhere in a bag and cats are messing with her and they're like singing about who they are. And I'm already sitting there going, why am I watching this? I wasn't feeling good anyway, but I don't think if I was feeling 100% health, I would have been enjoying myself. Um, <laughs> and so they're singing around, and then they start introducing her to to like certain cats. The main cats. The ones that we're supposed to care about. Supposed to care about. And... I swear, I don't know how long in the movie I wasn't timing it, but I felt like half the movie was, it goes something like this. Hey, I'm this cat. Hey, I'm this cat. This is my name. Hey, I am this cat. And then they move on to the next one. Hey, I'm this cat. Hey, I'm this cat. Hey, I'm this cat. That's my name. You know, and they'd be going from uh, the magician cat to... Uh, we're introduced to Idris Elba's cat, uh, James Corden's cat, uh, Rebel Wilson's cat. Rebel Wilson's cat is just Rebel Wilson as a cat. And, and we not only have to watch her clean herself, which this PG movie, anyone? Um, we, we have to watch her clean herself. And then 
She uh, is this Silence of the Lambs. She pulls off her cat bodysuit. She she unzips her 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 cat suit, and she has her stage clothes underneath. With I mean, yes, she has fur underneath, but what the hell, man? <laughs> and I'm sitting there going, okay. I, I had Peter Griffin in my head the whole time going, oh my God, who the hell cares, right? Just just the entire time. And we went through her and uh, Jason Derulo and just so many others. And I could see maybe like Jason Derulo's song being somewhat entertaining. But look, I like cats. I, I'm more of a dog guy, but I like cats. But I don't want to hear... 15,000 songs about, Hey, I'm this cat. Um, it got boring. The songs were mind numbingly bad, at least for the most of the movie. Now, when they get to whatever the main, I can't remember what the main song is called. The one that Jennifer Hudson sings. by the time they get to that one, you know, that's their, their let it go. Basically. Um, by the time you get to that, you don't give a crap. And here's the thing. When you meet Jennifer Hudson's character, gee, I wonder who's going to get to ride in the balloon. Um, because you find out that, oh, she's had a tough life that she, she like sold herself out to McCavity or something. She aligned with him or something. I don't care. And it's like, gee, I, she's the one that has the only one that has any real problems. At least they want you to believe that because the only time we ever see her is when she's either just spying on people or she comes out and whines and cries for two minutes and then she leaves and then she comes back and whines and cries some more. And then she comes out and sings her song for Judy Dench and, and gets to go in the balloon and just everything about this movie. I, I don't care about the characters you're supposed to, but I think you only can care about them maybe if you've seen the play already. Now, I'm sure that um, Tom Hooper is going to come out and go, well, I made this for the fans. I made it for the fans. They're the only ones who are going to appreciate it. Well, if you weren't too worried about it, why were you still working on it like right before it got released? And why are you sending out a new and improved version of Cats? Cats 2.0. Uh, that's supposed to be either, if it's not out already, it's coming out. This movie, I mean, just from the names of the cats, the mind numbing songs, I mean, the, the visuals are one of this movie's least problems. Sorry, another hairball, just this movie makes me want to vomit, I guess. Um, yeah, man, I, I was hoping to get something out of this movie. I, I, you know what? I promised I'd find something nice, but everything nice I'm going to say probably going to have is probably going to have like a undertone of, of not so nice. I mean, because again, dumb names, songs were, were mind numbingly bad. Again, the let it go song, whatever it was called. I don't remember the one that, uh, Jennifer Hudson sings. You don't care because you don't care about her. Okay, uh, let me find something nice. Um, that way I can go back to not being so nice. But as someone that prides themselves in trying to find the good and bad in all movies, and trust me, I tried. Um, Ian McKellen is Ian McKellen. And even though yeah, here comes a little underhand, even though he still looks creepy as a cat man, um, he's still Ian McKellen. And he'll survive this. Um, some of these other actors, eh, probably, but some of them shouldn't. Um, oh my goodness. Granted, they didn't know they were going to be weird, creepy cat people, uh, CG cat people anyway. Um, yeah, the movie even, I mean, the movie gets weird. The Taylor Swift thing is weird because, okay. One thing they did especially with the female cats, you can still, it, still tell it's women that are playing them, but they play down uh, like certain things that make them women except for Taylor Swift. Oh no, we make sure uh, we want Taylor Swift to be like the Jessica rabbit of the, this cat's universe. And it's weird. It's just weird. And again, I know there's people out there 
that might like this, good for you. It's creepy for me. It's just the weird cat people are creepy. If they would have made them more feline, like in the face, like the look of them might have worked. But again, especially with Taylor Swift's character, they made sure that certain parts of her stuck out. You've seen the pictures. It, you've seen the video. It's maybe I could use some of that catnip right now. Um, <laughs> this movie for me did nothing for me. Nothing. I thought the story. See, for me, a good movie. I I can appreciate a dumb movie. I can appreciate movies for the wrong reasons that people think are the wrong reasons. We all love movies for certain ways. And again, if you love this movie, fantastic for you fantastic for you but for me i i like characters and story above everything else and this movie gave me really no characters to care about it gave me this a story that is just mind-numbingly slow and it's just i I mean it took takes them forever i mean why do they only choose one cat i mean really if it's that bad in Catland, why don't you just let them all go? I don't know. And then the end. The end. Okay. Uh, McCavity tries to climb the balloon but falls. Okay. Bye, Idris. McCavity. And then, uh, then they sing their big number. You've seen it in the trailer where they're in front of the fountain. That's pretty much the end of the movie. They sing a song about being cats. We're cats, we're cats, we're cats. We're cats, we're cats, we're cats. We're cats. And then... Judy Dench looks at the camera and breaks the fourth wall. And basically get, goes in this whole speech and basically says... We're not dogs. We're cats. Why? I don't ever mention remember them mentioning dogs ever in the movie. We had mice. We had like roaches. But no dogs. Why do we, why are you bringing that up? Why? Forgive me, hairball edit. But yeah, I, I, I wanted to leave so bad. I've never walked out of a movie, and but I've been tempted at times. And this one tempted me so fast. I mean, Playmobil this year sucked. Don't get me wrong. And I hated it for a lot of the same reasons I hated this movie. And I had, you know, it's hard to find any redeeming qualities, but for Playmobil, at least I understand that it's like you're trying to sell to children. This is trying to sell to people that have probably loved this play for a long time. Again, not knowing the play, I don't know how to be. I'm curious if you like the Cats play, what you think about this movie. I really am. I am really curious about why people like this movie, don't like this movie. You know, I, I really want to see like some impassioned, uh, impassioned responses in the comments, but my God, I thought this movie was stupid. My God, my God. I am so glad that when it ended, I checked before the movie, I'm like, tell me there's not an after credits. I figured there's going to be this big, long, uh, during the credits musical number. Nope. Nothing. Movie was over. It's over. It's like, I could see, uh, I could see Tom Hooper going, that's my masterpiece. Love it. Love me. (laughs) You know, I I've stated before that I do not like pretentious movies that pretentious movies usually move themselves up the list. It took me a long time to figure that out. Uh, like when I picked, uh, fan four stick to be my worst movie of the year, the year it came out. It's like, Oh yeah. Cause it's pretentious. Uh, why pick London fields pretentious boy. I got a feeling that cats has moved to the front of the line to worst of the year. There's been some crap movies this year, but man cats, congratulations. Congratulations. Just follow that laser pointer to the front of the line. <laughs> all right so that's it that's it on cats before i cough up another hairball thank you so much for joining me for this edition 
of, well, I guess it was rapid fire reviews. As always, I want to hear what you guys think about these movies. Uh, Definitely leave me comments uh, in the section below. Until next time, I am your host, the real Gino Junior Reynolds, and thank dog this is over. See you later.